Sorry, this video was supposed to come out a little bit ago, but we had to get that big documentary out for reasons undisclosed. So if you haven't seen that already, go check that out. Sign up to our Patreon so we can do more of that stuff. In the meantime, here is a video about the HAF or Housing Australia Future Fund and how it may not be as shit light as you've been led to believe. Anyway, that's enough from me. Sign up to our Patreon. Actually, here's me for an hour. Enjoy. Before we get stuck into this video, I need you to know that when I say Greens voter, you're gonna think in the middle of your mushroom trip. Hey, I voted Greens last election. Or well, the one before that. F which one was it? Yeah? Well, if that's the case, this one's for you, huh? Oh, if only a precious party was in power, they would have installed enough wind turbines to kill this bird. I'm just saying, I get it. Like, I was once 18. I know a lot of you are shocked to discover I'm still not. But I also understand that if I didn't spend my life not having a life, I too would fall for the Greens predatory marketing tactics. I mean, I did. I used to literally think they were better on the environment because their colour was green. That's how fucking stupid I am. I still fall for Dados Direct gimmicks all the time. And the Greens are Dados Direct Democracy. They promise all these amazing features and then when it comes in the mail, oh, what? It's short-circuiting. We're supposed to have a six-year warranty. They even have that bullshit expert, Max Chandler Mather, their housing spokesperson that they drag on to talk about how your life will change once you install the rent freeze of 3000 to Labor's tired old housing legislation. Bouncing from screen to screen, selling the Greens using the tried and true infomercial classic, lying. The Greens must have studied the playbook of climate skeptics that they're perpetually smug about online. Only they spend as much time studying the legislation they block. You know the one climate skeptics always try to pull of, oh look everyone, look, 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 look. Global temperatures went down this year. How about we just ignore the decades upon decades they consistently went up. Greens with Labor's housing fund, look everyone, look. The fund they're basing it off went down this year. Just ignore the couple of decades it consistently went up. I mean, I get when comedians and stoners say shit like, um, stock market's like gambling, if you think about it. But for Max, a member of parliament to, I think, hire those guys as advisors, he's saying without a shred of humour in his voice that makes even me think, fuck, that is a nasal voice. For him to seriously argue that a strictly governed investment fund is the same as Costello walking into fucking Star City with $10 billion, because, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but the last time I bet on the dogs had lost, I received a profit on my lost bet that averaged out to be an annual return of 7.8% over the next two decades. What? You didn't choose the average out several dogs' performances over their lifetime feature on Sportsbet? Guys, you got to switch over to PD360, because if that's gambling, he's revolutionised it. Seriously, is the rest of this video even necessary? I'd much rather be doing a video where I try different American beers originally entitled Aussie Tries American Beers. Surely do even attempt the old look at this section of the graph. Don't look at the whole thing. I mean, come on. Exactly how climate skeptics ignore 99% of climate scientists because it's convenient for their argument to ignore them. What peak body in this country hasn't come out to say, what the fuck are you doing? This housing bill that the Greens just shot down isn't just good, it's vital. Which one? Do the Liberals count as a peak body? Because that's who the Greens are siding with. What other peak body? The National Party? Ooh, damn Greens, to throw another one of your painfully obnoxious phrases back in your gaunt, sickly faces. Looks like you're on the wrong side of history. This face, don't you think about 50% of their arguments is this face. You know how climate skeptics say, oh, global temperatures only went up like one degree. That's not much. How is that any different to... You can only spend up to $500 million a year and they claim it's gonna build 30,000 houses over five years, uh, which it's not. If you break it down, $500 million a year for five years means the house would have to cost $72,000 to build the house. And like, look, can, if someone can come and talk to me if you can build a house for $72,000 after this, that'd be sick. Um, <laughs> wow. What a shining example of why this unlikely alliance of acid casualties and neats should get their wish of holding the entire union movement to ransom in minority government, clearly. They can add much to the process of governing with their complete and utter ignorance of governing. I'm telling you, the crossbenchers that have the shits with the Greens for blocking this bill should add yet another constructive amendment declaring that Max Chandler Mather should be forced to wear a stick-it note on his forehead that reads, Please don't pay any attention to me, I suffer from the Dunning-Kruger effect. You think you're in the position with your fucking arts degree to drag out a whiteboard and lecture the country about finance, do you, Max? Go on, explain as usual, very embarrassingly, how you think the housing fund works. Which, let's be honest, if you knew, you'd be one of the execs making bank on it, baby. But the sheer arrogance. 
to think that with the assistance of your wily sidekick, Google Calculator, you figured out what no one in the Department of Treasury or Finance is smart enough to crack, that 73,000 monies, but it costs 300,000 monies to build a house. Look out, Coffeezilla, I just exposed a $500 million scam. 500 million is how much the fund will pay out in any given year as a minimum, just a reference to relate to the Zoomers that I don't think will get the credit it deserves. So I'm just pointing that out. Are you sure about that, Max? You're sure this board isn't just too difficult for you to grasp? I mean, you seem to be reading out a bunch of the words on it phonetically. What's called the COAG Reform Fund. Look, he even reads out the words state and territory phonetically, and yet no light bulb dings in his very long head that, oh, oh, look, the federal government gives out some of the money and the state government gives out some of the money. Is it any surprise? I mean, look at how much trouble he has trying to explain that basic concept. Some money might be able to be dispersed to states or territories for social or affordable housing or acute need. Again, we're not actually sure. And let's be clear, we're not even sure how much money is going to go into either of these accounts because we haven't been told. What you just witnessed isn't a man speaking English. That was a bird parroting English. He clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. The fact that the Greens housing spokesman, housing spokesman, has done less reading about how things are built in this country than most people who drive down a highway, as at least they've read the sign, this road was built in state and federal partnership. So don't go on to pretend like you understand the next part of the financing, Max. You don't even understand this. The true genius of this legislation that's clearly lost on the Greens is that it acts as a rock, a pool of continual government-backed funding that keeps increasing for the rest of eternity, even when we've all been nuked, the very last broadcast you'll ever see. And in other news, the Housing Australia Future Fund, or HAF, just went up by 5% this year due to its investments in canned corn. If you try and take my corn, I'll jam this in your throat while saying this just Mm. A steadily increasing pile of money acting like a shining beacon to super funds and other investors. Hello! Hello super funds! Look at this pile of cash that's not on the budget and therefore isn't under the constant threat of getting a this just in from the libs. Essentially, what the half is, is an insurance policy for when Labor isn't in power. So investors know when they're not in, funding for social and affordable housing won't fall off a cliff like it does every time the Liberals are in. You need that level of certainty if you're investing in decisions that are as long-term as building and renting out houses. When the government is saying to those investors, look, this investment should be as attractive to you as this Easter show clown is strangely to Zoomers. It is literally safe as houses. In fact, the government is putting a chunk of the money down so those investors know that they can make their portfolio even safer by putting the leftover cash that they'd otherwise have to front up entirely to build those houses into other investments. That's great for the government, as not only do they get equity in these investments, but by tying public and private capital together like that, all of a sudden they've unlocked all these pools of capital that the government otherwise could never even dream of touching. How much capital? Well, according to an expert, the Greens are deliberately ignoring because it doesn't suit their argument. Classic climate skeptic move. The fund has the potential to unlock, within the first two years of its passing, $9 billion of private investment. Just in the first two years. Money the government could otherwise never access, even if the fund underperforms its average of 7.8%. There's still a very good chance that the fund will offset itself within the first two years. Let alone all the money it'll attract over the rest of eternity, which let's assume that it only performs a quarter as well as that. Oh no, that means it'll take eight years to attract the equivalent in private capital. That private and public money flowing into specifically social and affordable housing will create a groove in the economy, a permanent river of finance, constantly flowing backed by the safest aquifers there are, which are government and super funds available to any entrepreneur that can figure out a way of making housing more affordable, more efficient, meaning one day you'll have entire businesses being built whose sole purpose is to build affordable housing. That's fantastic news for the poor, as that means these houses will one day be built by an entire industry based around delivering affordable housing that didn't previously exist. That means it doesn't matter what government's in power, and none of that would have ever taken place without that rock. The Greens are shitting on the half because they're too dumb to understand the moral of the children's fairy tale about the stone soup, let alone this stone. Clearly. This is exactly why the Greens block Kevin Rudd's price on carbon. We'll get back to it, but short answer, they are incapable, as in do not possess the grey matter, to even put one and two together, let alone pause to think, hmm, 
If what we're blocking is as urgent as we pretend it is on our placards, maybe we should think of ways to utilize 85% of the workforce's knowledge, skills, and resources that aren't public servants by including the private sector in the solution and encouraging them to building an entire self-sustaining industry whose sole purpose is addressing exactly the issue we're whinging about. But no, no, that's neoliberalism. The way virtually every industry in history has ever been built is neoliberalism. You know how my pet peeve is all these shitty first year uni words like socialism and neoliberalism because they're so vague, you can morph them into meaning whatever the fuck you like. Well, thanks to Max's think pieces, I finally figured out what the Greens mean when they say neoliberalism and it's anything they don't understand. That's neoliberalism. Such a simplistic worldview that they have. Like, monkeys at the zoo govern the same way the Greens do. There's one tool for resource allocation, that's a stick. The stick is tax. You beat any monkeys you don't like for their bananas and you give it to the monkeys that you do like in exchange for favours, which in their case is monkeys developing all female monkey adaptations of Shakespeare, which much like the half the Greens pretend to understand. But hang on, Sydney Theatre <gasps> Company. <gasps> The government's giving money to a company, guys. That's neoliberalism. Quick Greens, start blocking arts funding. The government's gambling that they won't develop any shit plays. You watch them turn around. <laughs> it's like old mate doesn't understand that it's about the average. Stop hyper-focusing on one poor performance from Kate Blanchett, my dude. I wonder why they're cool with, by their own admission, a neoliberal model when it satisfies even the most trivial of their whims, but they're not when it's about building basic necessities that don't affect them at all. All of a sudden, then it has to be ethical. Couldn't possibly be that they don't need public housing, so that takes a backseat to their main priority, arts, in that we're bringing theatre to parliament. Now that one's a reference to them obstructing and throwing a tantrum about the half, but uh, I don't think people are going to get that one either, so I just need to get that one. But just, just don't misunderstand me here. There's a reason that the stick is still around today. It is a tool, it works, but anything that's more advanced than a stick, neoliberalism. If they were born in a different time, they'd replace the word neoliberalism with witchcraft, as it comes from the same pea brain mentality that anything you're too stupid to immediately get, don't bother thinking about it. It's evil. I guess this is why Max Chandler Mather seems to be proud of the fact that he doesn't understand what he's talking about. He seems to see ignorance as an affirmation of his purity, so maybe instead, just for variety millennials, maybe we should seek the opinion of a man that doesn't repeatedly say when he's trying to explain the very thing he's explaining that he finds it confusing and complicated. Maybe it's to make it even more confusing. We're not really sure, does it go to government departments? This is already hopelessly complex. This is the government's ridiculously complex plan. Maybe instead we should listen to the Chief Executive of the National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation, and I know Greens voters, Oh, corporation! Yeah, well unlike the Sydney Theatre Company, it's a government corporation, just like your precious ABC, relax. He stated that by passing this bill, it immediately starts the development of 16,000 houses. Immediately. What a shock the Greens have repeatedly said it doesn't build any houses. They clearly don't understand how. They clearly don't understand that this is a fund that is primarily designed to fill in the gaps in funding of public and affordable housing projects that state and private enterprises have already started so they can finish them off as quickly as possible, build more than they're otherwise anticipating, and keep the chain of contractors, builders and suppliers continually employed in that field by creating a continual stream of income. That's how you turn $73,000 a piece into 30,000 fucking houses, Max. I'm sorry you don't get it. I'm sorry you and your entire party can't grasp any financial idea more complicated than money coming out of a single pot, like it's a leprechauns at the end of a rainbow, which is especially fitting seeing as they never bothered to properly cost any of their promises in the wider context of the budget. And also because they like gays. Look, he actually admits that. He actually admits that all he can understand is a single pot. Watch. Weirdly enough, it's not actually a thing that builds any houses. In fact, really what it is, is a lot of really complicated bank accounts. What? No wonder they think any other financial idea is witchcraft. This is Dark Ages stuff. A single king sitting on a mound of coins, dishing them out to ideas he likes. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that one. Look, look, I can see the coins leaving my hand and going into another one. Actually, that's not even fair to kings, as they used to fund projects with the assistance of barons. At least they understood. <laughs> the Greens don't. Think about that. The Dark Ages were less in the dark about finances than the Greens. A largely illiterate population, including very often the king himself, had a better understanding of how to get the most efficient value out of a buck than the NIMBY Prince.
The Greens couldn't even dream of getting that much value out of a tax dollar. You may as well be asking a dog what they figure they have. They couldn't even dream of leveraging all these other pools of capital to address the very issue they pretend to care about with maximum efficiency because these monkeys are stuck with their little stick. Tallying up the bananas in the sand like it's a 2001 Space Odyssey moment that... Oh, oh, 73,000? But it costs 300,000 to build a house! <laughs> Literally Zoolander looking at the model going, this fund has to be at least three times bigger. Idiots. I actually am a former male model. Even I get it. Don't worry though, that's not all the Greens don't get. They also, as Max repeatedly spews into any microphone within a cooey's distance of his lips, look at how eager he is to blurt this point out. It's as involuntary as vomit. Even if this bill passed today, we wouldn't see a single home built probably until after the next federal election in 2025. With regards to Labor's plan, it won't build a single home until 2025. A, it's not clear it's going to build more housing. Ooh, I take back the Greens lack any sophistication, a lie within a lie. Maybe they are capable of multifaceted thought. Doesn't stop the multifaceted thoughts from being simultaneously dumb though, obviously. The fact that he's even whining about commencement date, incorrectly mind you. He repeatedly says it's 2025 over and over again. A lot of these houses were actually supposed to commence construction next year, so I guess the goal of blocking this bill is to delay the build time so long that it actually does take until 2025 to start. But uh, what he's advocating for by even whining about construction time start is opening up billions and billions of public dollars to levels of corruption we saw under Gladys Berejiklian. He's just as usual too stupid to understand that he is. Permit me to explain. This is typical of the Greens, is you know how they were pushing for a federal ICAC in the last election like it was their idea? Because they believe in all the good things, you know? Whatever the good things are, that's what we believe in. Even when the good things contradict each other, we still believe in both good things at the same time because we're also evidence-based, um, actually. No, you can't have both. You either have procedures in place that ensure that public money goes into building public houses instead of John Barillaro's houses, or you don't, and you have the exact same extremely corrupt level of governing that you were all howling for John Barillaro's blood over when he was just signing off on $100 million projects. What? My friend said it was a good idea. Fuck off. And yet all the Green supporters cheer Max on. Oh, such a good point, Maxi. Passing Labor's bill doesn't open up a wormhole between Parliament and Bunnings and sucks out all the hard hats. That's what they think. That is what their supporters think. I got this bill from the Greens. This baby can build a house in under 40 seconds. 40 seconds? But I want it now! I think you just put your signature on a bill. Well, not them, the Greens are blocking this bill, but in the ideal Greens world where ironically the Greens don't exist. Ah, uh, yay! I just ended capitalism. Selfie! Time to get more photo ops with my rolled up Obama sleeves. Do 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 do. Okay, construction workers, there's a sandbox. Build 8,000, no, no, 80,000 houses in it. Because we're um, actually in a housing crisis at the moment, I'm um, actually. Uh, I don't think they're zoned for. Uh uh, you're supposed to be installing gas stoves, not gas lighting. I mean, think about that. Plucking anyone off the street would probably be an improvement on a green, you know, or national and just. Chuck it a bit, that MP's seat. It would be an improvement because the average person knows more about housing than the Greens housing spokesman knows about housing. As the average person knows that when you build a house, even when you don't have public money involved, it takes what, like a year of paperwork minimum before you can even think of picking up a shovel? Even if you played SimCity once in your life. You'd have a better understanding of how houses are built, as at least you'd know that zoning's a thing. That game's aimed at 10 year olds. The Greens aren't even mentally there. They're at the same level as a five-year-old, which is that you just feel like building a sandcastle, let the construction commence. No procedures, no approvals, just let the public money flow to anyone who says they can build the house, and yet they have the gall to say that Labor's plan is gambling. Why? Why is it okay when they do it and not when they do it? Because it's a different shade of green? Tell me again how I have a political team and you don't. At least mine's in the A grade. You're the streak is on the field. Literally. Now, if there's that many gaping holes in their criticisms, can you imagine the fucking canyons in their solutions? The Greens' solution. And don't worry, unlike Labor's, it's not very complicated, and that's why it's a good financial decision, right? Because someone with no background in finances or property development can immediately understand it. Show them, Maxie. Show us all how you being lazy is a great thing. There is actually a way simpler way of doing this. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, it's been done before by governments around the world and uh, also by Australian governments previously. 
It's the government spends $5 billion a year in the budget on public and affordable housing. You can tell if they were in that experiment where the psychologist said, you kids can have one marshmallow now or two marshmallows when I get back, even as 30 year olds. Marshmallow, give me the marshmallow now. Put aside that doesn't solve the long-term problem of funding for public housing when Labor isn't in power. In fact, put aside many, many problems with that argument that we'll get back to, but to even make that argument in the first place, that you should spend the 10 billion now. You have to employ yet another climate skeptic tactic, which is to focus on one data point that is deliberately misrepresented anyway, like, they said this island would be underwater, but I'm having a vacation on it right now. Looks like the only thing that's sinking is your argument. In this instance, the half is the island of money stitch. For the Greens to pretend that all Labor is doing is the housing fund, the Greens need to deliberately leave out that the Albanese government invested almost the equivalent of the half, 9.5 billion on housing in a single year. I told you they learned from climate skeptics. If it's inconvenient, pretend it doesn't exist. Why bother putting in crucial details like the Greens blocking this bill is not only blocking a $10 billion housing fund, but on top of that, close to another $3 billion of additional funding for housing programs. So, time to bring out the whiteboard again to explain their very stupid argument. This much money, potentially up to this much money, depending on private investment over the next two years, is shit, worse than nothing. Max is also saying that it's nothing and worse than nothing at the same time because he can neither confirm nor deny its existence to make his shit argument to begin with. 22 to 32 billion is a token amount designed to make it look like the government is doing something when in reality they're just playing PR games. Well, this much money. This much money is incredible. And the Greens have to let everyone know that not even 10% of this much is so good. And why? Because this much money follows the Greens' ironclad economic principle. They can pretend it was their idea. That's why it's a good amount of money, you see? Put aside the evidence-based party has zero evidence to back up that they were the ones that forced Albanese's hand into announcing this $2 billion spend on housing. He didn't need their help with it. It was also never part of the Greens' demands. That amount of money is also chump change to the Albanese government's tens of billions of dollars of commitment to public housing and is very consistent with their repeated mantra that they took to the election and have delivered on, which is to continually roll out more social and affordable housing announcements throughout their term. The Greens can't even point to a single time they asked for that amount of money in a meeting, but it was their idea. And it's totally not PR. This amount of money is though. You know how the animals in the little red hen don't help her grind up the grain or mix up the flour, but as soon as the bread's baked, oh, can I have a slice, honey? The Greens are worse than that. Not only do they not contribute at all to the years of work involved in policy formation, but at the end they have the gall to say, mm, actually, I made that particular slice of bread, and that slice of bread is actually the one with all the nutrients in it, and the rest of the loaf is simultaneously trash and doesn't exist. Keep in mind, this is the same party of exasperating c**ts that repeat that lame platitude on Twitter that correlation doesn't equal causation. Yes, very evidence-based Greens. How come then the only evidence you have that the $2 billion Anthony Albanese announced to fund state projects at a state labor conference is the correlation that that state labor conference happened at some point in the months and months you've been obstructing $13 billion of funding for social housing, which even if your highly unlikely claim is true that there was this secret Robert Kennedy and Dobrin meeting between you two and fucking Turkey that labor will pay out $2 billion and in exchange the Greens will go on to block the bill anyway? Masters of negotiation. Like seriously, how obvious is it that they're lying? But let's pretend that they're not. <coughs> 11 billion in the red when it comes to housing funding. <coughs> like a little Google calculator malfunction on that one, did it Max? This is how little evidence the evidence-based party needs to reinforce the middle lie they tell themselves that the reason that we vote Greens is because we make Labor better. Yeah, I'm sure a brain tumour thinks the same of itself too, but if you look into it, what the Greens actually do is fuck up major Labor policy after major Labor policy, all for the self-serving purpose of creating the image that they're making Labor better. The price on carbon, the Malaysia solution, carbon credits, they're doing it right now with housing as we speak. The classic one they always try to pull off to enforce this shit marketing gimmick that we're making Labor better. This is their order now and you'll receive a second feather dust. Are you ready for it? We got Labor to agree to make the housing fund spend a minimum of $500 million a year. <gasps> minimum! You know how Donald Trump used to scribble over speeches about trade that he's supposed to make? Trade is bad. The Greens just scribble over the top of any bill they don't understand. Minimum!
they did exactly the same thing with Labor's 43% emissions reduction target. That deserves an entire video of this length in itself. But basically, the Greens' contribution to housing, this is why they're worth their 11 Senate seats, according to the true experts, Reddit. This is how they've hashtag made Labor better. In the negligible years that the fund doesn't make a profit, that it more than offset by the years that it does, and far more offset by the private capital it attracts, the Greens, with their genius negotiation skills of lying about them negotiating in the first place, got the fund to pay out a minimum of $500 billion a year. And by them, I mean Labor did it for them and said, look, look, we've included your favourite word. You happy? Of course they weren't. They never are. They took credit for Labor writing in the word minimum for them. That's Adam Baird's Lytle Hutz gets to a justice tie. Still got it. Moment. Keep in mind, one of the main critiques the Greens have, as we've just discussed in length, this isn't true, but one of their pretend critiques is that all Labor's doing is shuffling money around into different accounts to make it look like they're doing stuff on housing as a PR move. Um, actually, that's all the Greens have done. That is all the Greens have done. They got Labor to shuffle money they were going to spend on housing anyway into a different account purely as a PR move. I mean, how low effort is that? Look at how little they have to do to get claps from the happy clappers on Twitter that they did it all by themselves, even though they did not. Look at what all their supporters say. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen these same accounts over and over heralding the genius of the Greens for throwing a tantrum and getting a lolly while saying at the same time about the policy they neither understand nor have read. Maybe it's a fucking joke. They should be building 30,000 houses a day, not 30,000 houses over five years. Which again, not true. Stop pretending that all that Labor's doing is the half. But wow, Labor's shit light until they build 30,000 social houses a day. Mm. Uh, just checking, you do know that this whole argument is about social and affordable housing, right? Not just housing being built in the country. There's a little more than 30,000 houses that will be built over the next five years in this country. The government doesn't build all the houses. Mervac does a few of them. The number of times I've read, there's like a billion migrants coming in and all Labor is doing is building 30,000 houses. That's a completely separate issue. You may as well be saying you're not doing anything about childhood obesity and fat kids live in houses too. If you like, another time we can discuss how the number of migrants coming into the country is actually reducing compared to the golden age of the Liberals. But for now, 30,000 houses a day. Why didn't Albo think of that? Couldn't be that if you got off your phone for a couple of minutes and touched grass, you'd see that houses on your own street that got approval two years ago still haven't started construction, as we're in the middle of a chronic labour shortage of about half a million people. We're also in the thick of a material shortage that has made construction time, not approval time, just construction time, go up by a third. This might shock a lot of Greens voters with their bullshit jobs that don't produce anything other than clay pots, but you can't just throw money at a problem and make it good. If you could, Tom Ballard would still have a show. There's other factors involved when you're Prime Minister that you have to make considerations for, and those include all these factors. But thanks for your parliamentary submission, Aussie Green Sock Dem 420. Just build, um, 30,000 houses a day. That level of thinking doesn't disqualify you from being the housing spokesperson of the Greens, though. Max actually thinks that. Check it, Reddit junkies. Wait to leave your snarky comments that regurgitate the exact talking points that are being dispelled in the very video you're watching until the end, please, because you need to hear this. I want to laugh at how you try and defend this. In a study that Max Chandler Mather published on his own website arguing, um, you should freeze rents now, actually. Like, come on, guys. Even Nixon did it. Oh, Nixon froze rents, did he? Um, when was he Prime Minister of Australia again? Was this before or after Watergate? Did he fly off in that helicopter and challenge Fraser for leadership, did he? Sorry, my knowledge of Australian history isn't as comprehensive as yours who clearly pieced it together from Instagram posts, but I'd love to know how Prime Minister Nixon did that, seeing as the federal Australian government can't enforce rent controls. As in, the federal government is constitutionally barred from enforcing rent controls. Surely the Greens know that. I hope they'd know it because now that I'm saying it out loud, I wouldn't be surprised if no one in their entire party's ever read the constitution. But those are the options when it comes to the Greens. Always was, always will be. They're either that dumb or they're being that off the charts deceitful for pure selfish gain. Take your pick. Look at their call to action. I want you to especially pay attention to the photo because that's worth a thousand words. Freeze rent because I'm finding it very stressful to pay for my nice renovated Heritage listed in a city terrace. Freeze rents. Freeze yogurts. Freeze rents. 
freeze yogurt. Well, you gotta say there's no reason at all that the Greens went with this picture instead of this picture when calling for action over a rental crisis. The same people that had a spaz over Labor having an ad that had, oh, white workers in it. Oh, white people suck, especially when they're working class. I mean, if that's not enough, I've got more. This is the one for their petition for New South Wales. This is their one for the petition for Victoria. Oh, more inner city c**ts. More inner city. Oh my God, they're also all white. But it's okay though, because they're not working class and so they don't suck. Don't you think though, don't you think? Business party, workers party, not workers party. I mean, fuck, look at this guy. I spent my Tuesday making banana bread. Come on! Come on! They're gonna say I'm reading too far into that? Their depiction of the rental crisis is the inner city. The only seats the Greens have Buckley's chance of ever winning, and yet they somehow just decided by pure coincidence to elicit the reader's sympathy about poor old tennis coaches and DJs finding it difficult to split the rent on the Paddington Terrace and still afford their weed habits. They're gonna say that this is all a conspiracy to say that the Greens' morally abhorrent obstructionism in the Senate is about dangling the self-interested false hope to specifically those people. Quote, Labor has the power to fix the problem by freezing rent increases for two years now. As we've just gone through, lie. Absolute shocking lie. Labor has the power to fix the rental crisis. They're just choosing not to. Which as usual, I'm kind of speechless as to how simultaneously ignorant and dishonest that is. If you said something that misleading in any other profession, you'd be dragged in front of fair trade faster than the Greens voters line up for new artisan croissant shops. The rest of this video explains exactly how, so we won't bother now, but my point is... What? What are you going to say to this? Can't really use the same pathetic crab walk Max used of... Well, the Greens have shifted and now we'd like Labor too, and we've said two things. One, we'd like a guarantee of two and a half billion dollars of investment in public, community and affordable housing every year. And we want the federal government to coordinate a national freeze on rent increases by putting a billion dollars on the table, similar to the way they've coordinated other national reform efforts uh, to states and territories who freeze rent increases for two years and introduce caps on rents after that. This is well after that. Still on their website, look at their call to action. Join us in calling on for a national rent freeze now. Jesus, forget reading the constitution. They don't even read their own press releases. Calling on for a. Uh, the best, absolute best outlook you can have on that is that they are holding up houses being built for these people to nurture the already massive victim complexes in these people by lying to them on a level that would sink any government no worries. This is right up there with there will never be a carbon tax, no cuts to education. It's that level stuff. But seeing as the Greens platform is built on the Xanax induced fantasies of COFA students, they just float on by to the next lie. Their base doesn't care at all that this slogan is nothing but a siren song designed to snag a bunch of impressionable kids because remember kiddies, the solution to complicated macroeconomic problems can always fit on a bumper sticker. Always. Just don't read the fine print of that bumper sticker that says, try to fix your rent freeze, make all shots. Yeah, the Greens rent freeze. Let's go back to the whiteboard for that one, shall we? Really liking this edition, Max. I'd say it's your one true contribution to the national debate, but look, you even stole that off of climate skeptics. According to the Greens, this isn't enough money to put even a dent in public housing, but rent, rent, a problem that affects, by the Greens' own numbers, a third of the population, this much money will solve that. One billion dollars, which is what? One seventeenth of what it costs to build West Connex. That'll convince the states to freeze rent, something economists almost universally have said, please don't do that. And the evidence-based party still pushing it because bribing the states with what might as well be three cents follows the sound economic principle of they thought of it. You're seeing the pattern? Oh, you want to help the homeless? Here's our demand. Don't help renters spend a billion dollars of public money reinforcing our marketing idea that you're shit and we're making you better and we're helping renters. This is the Greens compromising, you see? Also, they hate political ad spending too because they're the party that likes all the good things. You have to remember that too, um, actually. actually. Um, actually. Dude, how good would it be if they remade the movie Love Actually as one of their political ads and called it Um Actually? Look, I'll extend an olive branch to the Greens just so I can bonk them over the head with it. Oh, what do you know? A stick is a good tool. Rent controls sound good. So let's be fair and pretend that national rent control is possible. Let's be so fair that we pretend that minor flaw in the Greens argument that it's impossible is possible. As a thought experiment, if that can be used when discussing a complete and utter lack of thought. What's your argument for freezing rents? 
Well, because they're mentally five. San Francisco has it! Oh, please fuck off to San Francisco, Max. You'd love it there. Plus, you wouldn't have to go to the effort of trying to turn us into that new town on steroids shithole because, as you'll see, this is a recurring pattern with rent controls. They severely decrease the amount of rental homes available. W. Not exactly great when your explicitly stated reason for introducing rent controls is to stop people from going homeless. Not only did it do that, it probably contributed to the gentrification of San Francisco, so no wonder the Greens are pushing so hard for a rent freeze, because if all of Australia becomes Roselle, fuck yeah, the only good market is the weekend market. The Greens are suddenly competitive in every seat. New Jersey did it! Not really, municipalities have the ability to do that if they want, so basically Max's argument here is, we should have what we already have. The states can already do that. Studies repeatedly show that rent controls had at best a minimal impact in New Jersey when compared to the rest of the country. W. Berlin did it. Yep, and rental apartments dropped by 57%. W. The Greens then tried to spin that example, apartment rentals more than halving, as a positive. How? Climate skeptic move, of course. Just ignore critical pieces of information like that. Instead, this is the best piece of information they could find to maybe support them. You ready? Berlin's housing supply actually improved compared to other German cities. Source? Literally, the meme of stone is talking out of shit. Dude, trust me, bro. Nothing. They provide no source. What a shame, too, as I actually think they're so stupid. They're so out of their depth when they're talking about this that they saw the word housing. Oh, housing. People read housing. Yeah, they also buy housing. I bet that's actually what they're talking about, is if you can track the rental apartment market by 57%, this will shock the Greens who magically think that houses appear out of the ground. They also don't magically disappear either. They probably went up for sale, even if that's not true, even if they're claiming that the rental market expanded. Housing includes condos. It includes architecturally designed wonder homes. It includes palaces. The stat of that massive, damning reduction in apartments is important, as you wouldn't know this, Greens, because when you think of struggling renters, you think of Mumford and Sons here. Poor people live in apartments. The people you claim you're fighting for, remember? I looked for that source. I couldn't find it. The best possible spin that they could put on this abject, abject failure. So until I do, no, I'm not going to take an unsourced, vague claim that Berlin became a renter's paradise. It's just everyone who needed an apartment found a flatmate. Who knew that halving the rental apartment market also taught us all how to share? I'll stick with the fact that Berlin, by far the most competitive rental market in the country with 140 rental applicants per rental property. The next highest city being 63. Thanks. But you keep telling yourself in the very same paragraph you made that unsourced, obviously desperate reach, and I quote, it's a classic case of having a preset opinion and then searching for evidence to back it up. They then try to do similar stuff with New Jersey immediately. Again, some obscure claim that it caused property owners to subdivide their shit properties into two shit properties. No source again. Doesn't address the main point, which is it did fuck all. So I'll cut right to it. Trust me, bro. This is the Greens clearly again with a preset opinion, then searching for evidence to back it up. You know why my opinion isn't? Because my opinion used to be your opinion. I honestly used to think rent control was a good thing, then I heard your fucked arguments. Like guys, come on, this isn't hard, I'll give you a free kick. This is a good example, Jack Lang doing it in 1931. Why was that a good example? Because it was the right economic circumstances, which is terrible, like really, really bad. The depression. Your examples, Vienna did it! Max, these are all cities. You're using cities to call for national rent freezes, bar one, which was Spain, that you listed as yet another W. All that did in Spain was shrink it to one of the smallest rental markets in Europe, and as a result, they just scrapped it. W. But back to Vienna. Yep, Vienna's another city, but it's one of the rare examples of rent control actually working, and you know why they work there? Because as this oblong-shaped airhead admits, in the same tweet, it's astonishing how often they disprove themselves in their own argument. In the same tweet, he says, 60% of the housing there is social housing. You see the impossible standard they hold labor to for no reason other than it makes them feel superior to not like things that are mainstream. The Greens pretend they put the word minimum on a bill. Oh my God, this is better than knowing the broad city's returning. Talk about the beer minimum. For Labor not to be deemed shit light in the Greens' hair dye soaked minds, Labor would have to invent a time machine, go back in time and start a major housing program in the 20s like Vienna did. It would be a bit of a challenge, as unlike Vienna, we weren't exactly a developed urban city back then. We were a continent with 30 fucking people on it, so Albert would have had to gather them all around. Guys, forget basics like roads and sewage. We need to direct all infrastructure efforts to building enough apartments to house 30 million people so one day the Greens give us the slightest amount of props on Twitter. 
What's Twitter? Oh yeah, how do I even communicate the concept of smartphones to people who are still installing telegraph poles? Well, stop building basic communication services, guys. There's no need for that. We need to build millions of apartments you don't need right now. Whoa, this election's gonna be easy as to win. Not only that, they're also going to have to figure out how to not cause any butterfly effects at all when changing history so much that they win every election from then to now in order to see that program through and and not think of any insurance policies like the half just in case Labor need to lose one of those elections in order to not mess up the space-time continuum so much that squids emerge from the oceans and take over the planet as that would be neoliberalism. Also, they'd have to figure out how to win one of the two referendums Labor was overwhelmingly thumped in when they asked the public if they could federally control rent. No help from the state governments either because because despite them being far wealthier at this point in history, as Max clearly pointed out, federal and state partnerships is also neoliberalism. And if they do all of that, then and only then will Labor not be shit light, according to these people who clearly don't know shit. And let's be honest, even if they did all that, the Greens would then move the goalposts and cry about, they're shit light because they didn't um, turn bus stop benches into bus swings. They floated that. I told you they're five. The reason they think red freezers will work here is because it works at the ACT. Yeah. If there's one city that's typical of the Australian economy, it's Canberra. A rental market that is as close as you can get to a captive audience. You have a bunch of high-earning bureaucrats who have to live there. They don't want to. And so they're not going to buy. They're more than happy to rent at high prices so they can get the fuck out of their ASAP and who can blame them? As such, it is the second most expensive rental market in the country despite being a glorified dubbo. Airbnb isn't eating up much of the rental market there either as Canberra's not exactly the fucking sunshine coast, is it? Landlords in Canberra are perfectly happy with rent caps because they're still making bank. Guess where property will be taken off the market when you do put in rent controls? Boom. If you're poor, just so you know, there's a reason this petition doesn't have you in it. There's a reason the freeze rents boards aren't in your suburbs. This ain't aimed at you. The Greens don't give a fuck about you. You're a virtue prop. If they did, Max Chandler Mather might have bothered to read the studies he frequently publicly cites that said exactly what all his real world examples said that he also didn't bother reading. Rent controls work in very specific economic circumstances, usually very rich or very poor. And even then, usually only as a quick stop. In the mid to long term, which is exactly what the Greens are calling for, a two year national rent freeze on the evidence-based procedure of, hey, think of a number between one and 10. Mm, two. Yeah, cool, I'm vibing two, two. <laughs> they said, his own studies mind you, he picked these. They said, you freeze rents, you start reducing the amount of rental properties available. The Guardian reckons a reduction of somewhere around the area of 15%. Labor points to studies on you know, his own website that said that while it might help prevent displacing incumbent renters in the short term, it is going to mean in the you know, medium to long term that there is less supply of rental properties. One study had it at as much as a 15% decrease in the rental stock. The Greens even acknowledge the number of 15% and then go on to argue for rent freezes anyway in the very article that they then go on to argue that everyone else is backwards rationalising their opinion. So let's be even fairer to the Greens than they are to themselves. 10%. Let's go with 10%. Their policy reduces rental properties by 10%. Uh... That's a shitload more people who can't find a house. That's gonna increase homelessness, massively. For the very group of people the Greens claim to be rescuing from future homelessness by blocking a bill designed to help the currently homeless. Guys, you sure you're the party of evidence? You sure you're not just the party of BPD manifesting itself into a political movement? I guess if the Greens don't read the constitution or the legislation they're building entire campaigns around opposing, it really shouldn't come as any surprise that they don't even read the literature they claim supports them. In fact, that should be their slogan. Greens, why bother reading when you know you're right anyway? And because they don't read, because they don't even do the bare minimum of work, as they know they'll get pats on their head from their supporters anyway, just for saying the word minimum over and over again, like a mental patient, when asked, how are they going to deal with that many people that won't have a place to live at once when you take that many houses off the rental market? Their solution? Get ready for this. From the Greens' perspective, their view of the world is that the government should step into that gap. The government should be building more social housing. The government should actually own the properties that it, it then you know, leases out to people. So they see if there is any gap that opens up from less private supply that the government can help fill that. I 
guess that's why the self-absorbed Byron Bay hippie faction of the Greens exists, because once the symptoms of this bumper sticker kick in, not to worry, they have a homeopathic remedy for the side effects of mass homelessness. If you just redirect your attention to the other side of the combi, magic happens. Magic. That's their solution. Magic. Private sector can't help though, because that's dark magic, remember? In the middle of a material and labour shortage, somehow the government will magically build enough houses to house 15% of the rental population by 2025. Because remember, as Max exposed with his profound ignorance of the very subject he pretends to be an expert on, you can build houses instantly. Development proposals, funding applications, they're just capitalist myths perpetuated by Albo because he's a landlord. Material shortages, labour shortages, jeez, who'd have thought worker labour would be a capitalist myth, but here we are. That's why they're blocking a bill that does exactly what they pretend they want, which is to start the process of getting to their utopic Vienna by increasing the number of bill to rent houses where you actually can control rent. But the fact that it took Vienna 100 years to get there, capitalist myth. The Greeds know that labour, quote, has the power to fix the rental crisis, they're just choosing not to, because they're choosing to run this by the Ministry of Social Services instead of the Ministry of Magic. Kevin Rudd's clearly the head, he's a wizard. Everyone knows all Alba has to do is go to the moving painting in his office. You hey, Professor Rudd, millions of public houses, please. I can't, the Greens have put an obstruction curse on it. Well, Max knows those are the facts, as clearly that's all the reading he's done. He's part of the you should be able to separate J.K. Rowling from her art faction of the Greens. This is something that the podcast This Week on Wednesday constantly talks about. It's a must listen. Subscribe or whatever the word is for that. It routinely demolishes the shocking vacuousness and self-serving opportunism of this coalition of space cadets and Fitzroy fuckwits who, if I had it my way, I'd wall that suburb up and treat it like Palestine. I love the rest of Melbourne, but God, it would be satisfying seeing Harvey Yemity back at his old IDF gear making these symptoms of modernity line up for five hours. Is this the croissant line? It's moving faster than usual. You can't leave until you answer how if climate change exists, why am I wearing a vest in the summertime? They wouldn't be able to answer that either, because like with all of their beliefs, if it actually is evidence-based, it's purely coincidental that it lines up with the vibe. Even the fact they say evidence-based is based on the vibe. Obviously by now, right? You see the massive holes of logic the Greens jump over just to get to this electoral level up. Congratulations, by jumping over that pile of orphans, you won the seat of McNamara. How anyone other than the most gullible and vapid could be tricked into thinking this incompetent, shallow, breathtakingly dishonest party could ever have the correct answer to any societal issue, especially public housing, when their foundations are always this shaky. This isn't a one-off. This isn't a new trick they learned, this is their trick. This is their ping pong show, only it's far more disgusting. It's, hmm, what's the public anxious about? Oh, housing? Okay, let's obstruct progress on that issue so we can get millions of dollars in media attention for our snake oil cures on it. Electorally profit off the people who buy the lies so we can parachute in more useful idiots like Max Chandler Mather to spook more of our bullshit elixirs. I mean, guys, could it be any more obvious that it's a pyramid scheme? Get it? Their logo is a triangle. One day I'll go through all their scams in detail just to show you what a great little con they've got going by playing the we're anti-markets market. Like all scammers, they don't give a fuck about the lives they ruin in the process. The classic one of course being the we killed the price on carbon because we care con. Now watch, look in the comments, you'll notice the same few hundred commenters. They're always on any anti-greens post. They're the greens 300. Except I'm sure they all look like heffy alties. So go forward, mighty keyboard warriors. Write down all the conspiracies you've concocted in your sick minds on how you justify the supposed party of the environment killing off a price on carbon and dooming us to 10 years of climate inaction for the same reason they're now keeping people homeless, which is disgraceful, lurid, personal gain. How do I know it's for disgraceful, lurid, personal gain? Because big brain here, it's just, his brain is the shape of a Coles mince meat tray to fit that rectangular shaped head. He's such an idiot that he published what might as well be the Greens internal party notes. Then he's so dumb that he drew national attention to the fact that he said the quiet part loud while all the nation's cameras were pointing right at his very long head. So they had to zoom out a lot. He said, did you hear me? I said the quiet part loud. And then as usual had a cry that it didn't get the happy claps he normally does from his fellow upper middle class flesh pods in the knitted jumper cult. The Prime Minister in question time today in quoting an article I wrote in Jacobin uh, said that the article said 30,000 homes, as the Prime Minister said, were being opposed. Those words do not at any point appear in the article. Uh, at any point. Uh, 
So I would ask the Prime Minister to come back and withdraw those comments. The, those words you attributed to me in the article do not appear in the article. Order. This is the same c that spent half a podcast laughing along, joining in, calling Anthony Albanese a stupid cunt. Yeah, that's right. I'm not sure what he thinks, to be honest. But um, I, that seems like a kind reading. I, I don't think they think... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, you're right, he's a dumb cunt. Uh, <laughs> but as soon as someone even dares draw attention to his own words, not a civil debate! I'm telling you, if I've learned anything over the last 10 years of dealing with these pricks, and they are all the same pricks, if the Greens were honest, this would be their logo. That character trait right there, always the tell of a low life. Everyone from Blue Checks to journalists to John Barillaro to Nicole Flint, they all have that spoilt little fat shit at school with the top of the line laser tag equipment and just chucks you one of the shit pistols. That classic trait of I'm allowed to kick you in the face, but if you kick me in the face, I'm telling mum. This is why he felt perfectly entitled wasting Parliament's time whining about his feelings, claiming that it was taken out of context by Anthony Albanese. It wasn't. Those were full quotes. That's the entire thrust of Max's think piece. This is mostly what this video is based on, as that article is a diamond in the Twitter rough, a perfect compression of all of Max's brain farts crystallising together so you could see right through them that, oh, these are all transparent as fuck. There's a reason Anthony Albanese encourages you to read it. There's a reason I encourage you to read it as well. Look, I'll even provide you with what Max couldn't. A copy. Yeah. In Parliament, when asked if he could produce the article he was wasting everyone's time with... The member of Griffith is seeking to table a document. I would love to. I don't have it. I just want to... Is that... Resume your seat. Resume your seat. Resume your seat. Resume your seat. Order. Hang on, just let's pause this. How good is Bill Shorten laughing in the corner? Which of course Max's little gobliny supporters online say, Bullying! That's bullying! This is how politically educated they are, this comment. Oh my god, is Parliament always like this? No, because no one in Parliament is that stupid and unprepared. Labour hacks pretending like him forgetting to bring the thing he's complaining about as some mad own? Yes. Yes, it is a mad own. On himself. It is a mad self own. Look at Max's face. Even he knows he fucked it. Really says a lot about his fans when they're trying to defend something even he knows he can't defend. Who'd have guessed that the one Marshmallow kids grew up to be the same kids that didn't do their homework at school, who then grew up to be so incompetent at life that they don't see anything massively unprofessional about a member of parliament so ill-prepared that he didn't even bring in his own homework, while Albo's so prepared that he brings in Max's homework for him. Look. By Max Chandler Mather. <laughs> Published in the Jacobin magazine, in which he says, consequently, if the Greens were to wave through the half bill, it would foreclose on the possibility of building the social and political pressure needed to force the government to take meaningful action. Oh, yeah. And says, further, allowing the half to pass would demobilise the growing section of civil society that is justifiably angry about the degree of poverty and financial stress that exists in such a wealthy country. And goes on to say, Mr Speaker, while Parliament has debated the half, the Greens have also launched a national door-knocking campaign targeted Labor federal electorates. Mr Speaker, this article, this article exposes the political motive of the Greens political party and this member in opposing public housing and, 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 and makes it very clear, and I'm very happy to table every word of it, and I'd encourage people in my electorate to read this because it's an example of why you should vote Labor and never vote Green. Yeah. Order. But remember, that's bullying. This isn't. Yeah, that's right. I'm not sure what he thinks, to be honest. But um, I, that seems like a kind reading. I, I don't think they think... <laughs> uh, no, you're right. He's a dumb cunt. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry to steal your material, Jess. Uh, you can have that. No problem. <laughs> that's your brain on greens. I'll add to Albo quoting Max. Remember, these are Max's words. This perler, look at this one. By refusing to pass Labor's housing plan without even a debate, the Greens forced a national discussion about large-scale investment in public housing and a rent freeze. This can help lay the political foundations needed to push Labor into making real, lasting concessions. Come on. What he just said took me an entire video to explain in one paragraph. You know Chomsky's quote, it takes a minute to tell a lie and an hour to refute it. 
I think we've well and truly proven that today, haven't we? In all these paragraphs, right through his think piece in the Jacobin, he describes awful, incomprehensively self-serving evil things. It's just anything sounds good with cultist euphemisms like, what? You're planning a mass suicide? No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just the final transformation. Like to recap, which thanks for giving me the opportunity to do it, Max. This is why you shouldn't have brought it up in parliament. The real lasting concessions he's talking about is putting a green stamp on the idea of transferring $500 million from one housing account to another housing account, just so Max gets to write, we got real lasting concessions. Concessions they got, by the way, by deliberately obstructing vital reform aimed at helping society's most vulnerable, that they're using as a bargaining chip to manufacture a media circus that they can electorally profit off by selling the public bullshit solutions, or how Max puts it in his infomercial cultanese, forcing national discussion about large scale investment in public housing and a rent freeze. You see? They're just phrasing it in a way that allows it to keep the self-assured indignation in their really annoying voices when they wheeze. Your bill on the table at the moment does nothing. You can go on and try and spin it as much as you want. It does nothing for enters. I mean, it is in your power. It is in the power of Prime Minister Anthony Albanese to do that because he just showed a couple of days ago that this government could do that somehow out of the back of the couch, $2 billion appeared. Is anything they say true? This bill has the biggest increase in 30 years in rental assistance for low-income renters. They're blocking that bill because the government won't cave to their insane, psychotic demands of making the very people they're pretending to grandstand on behalf of, i.e. renters, homeless. And the worst part, the absolute worst part of all of it is, they're making me even talk about renters. This bill was supposed to be helping the absolute down and out. We're talking about the disabled, mums with kids fleeing domestic violence situations, and the Greens doing the only calculation they seem to be capable of, political and year four level division, got out the ideas board once again, found the biggest number they could find. 640,000 people are in need of social or affordable homes. Really Mad Max aeroplane noise warrior. That's a coal exec he's proudly standing next to along with another Green Senator Larissa Waters to protest aeroplane noise. Hmm, looks like the Greens can be pragmatic as long as it's something that affects themselves even slightly. Oh, I'm trying to watch White Lotus! But when it comes to domestic violence victims on Struggle Street, I can't think of ways to exploit them with all this aeroplane noise! Now to look around for the 640,000 people need social and affordable housing stat that the Greens repeat as one of their cult mantras because I'm starting to notice something about the Greens. Nothing they say is true. What the Greens have done is find the number of people experiencing housing stress. Sure, not a nice thing, but they are deliberately misinterpreting that to mean that they need public housing. What metric are they using to define someone who's experiencing housing stress? Anyone who spends 30% or more of their gross income on housing, which is an issue that needs to be addressed, sure, but Christ, I spent the majority of my 20s paying at least 60% of my income in rent. It wasn't fun. I lived off of lentils and carrots until I was 27, but I at least possessed an ego not grotesquely inflated enough to think that no one, no one in the country was doing it tougher. So it's time to bring out the whiteboard again. They are deliberately shutting off the empathy of this number of people to make them the story at the expense of this number. What's this number? That's the number of people who actually need social and affordable housing. Those are the people whose wildest dreams are to be in housing stress as they don't have a house to be stressed about. People who, unlike the people the Greens are trying to reach with these unconscionable theatrics, don't just dress like bums as an aesthetic. How many of those 122,000 people are being held up from having houses that they can live in? Well, if you listen to someone who isn't deliberately and repeatedly feeding you hogwash, claiming, quote, this won't impact or delay the homes being built as Labor's bill doesn't um actually guarantee any money until 2024, 2025. This won't impact or delay homes being built. So saith man who admits yet again, he does not understand how houses are built in the first place in the exact same sentence yet again. We really need to start playing a game where we find a sentence where the Greens don't contradict themselves. And I'll give you the same thing the Greens do if you find it. Fuck all. Fuck all may include making you homeless. But if you listen to an actual expert, Nicholas Proud from the not-for-profit Powerhousing Australia, the Greens delaying this bill has stopped enough homes being built to house 25,000 people. 
25,000 people that had approvals, tight time schedules, funding, all figured out in the middle of a material and labour shortage. That's more than a fifth of the people that actually desperately need homes in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Only the beginning of Labor's policy, mind you, which, let's be honest, is very ambitious, very comprehensive, visionary visionary. This is unbelievably forward thinking, but you watch, look down in the comment section, the 300 charging it with their war cry, that's not good enough. For reasons I've probably already debunked in this video. Fuck off. You sitting on your fat, zero-skilled, Reddit-addicted ass. Of course you were not Dota the whole time. Your only thoughts on the subject were while looking at a thread while you were taking a shit and typing. <laughs> shit, no. <laughs> yeah, we must have just missed you sitting through the years of committees, the years of public policy development, the years of consultation with experts. Redditors know that what this major reduction in poverty Labor was about to unleash and then blocked by the Reddit party was low-hanging fruit. The final defence the 300 will always fall back to, this is their pass at Thermopylae. Well, at least the Greens started the debate. I mean, they may as well be saying just like a chocolate milkshake, only crunchy. That's exactly Max's talking point. Their arguments are advertising slogans. All of them, all the classics, we're making labor better, we get concessions, evidence-based, we force to debate. As I scrolled through their website, it made me realize something about scams. No one actually believes this Phantom of the Opera mask is gonna shave years off their face. No one actually believes this vibrator you strap onto your stomach will give you a six pack. What they want, as in what they're actually buying, is the lie. Not the physical product. The physical product is just one element of the actual product. The lie is the product. The lie is what they want because the lie is comforting. They don't want to face the reality, which is that a global cost of living crisis sucks for everyone, as in the world, global. But just like people buying this robot jerking itself off, they don't want to hear that the actual way to be fit is exercise and proper diet. People buying the rent freezer 3000, they don't want to hear that the way that you deal with rent hikes is what Labor's already doing, which is in the short term, you try and keep a lid on inflation. In the mid term, you build bill to rent houses so that you actually can control the rent, creating a self-sustaining industry as the long-term goal. So we do eventually become like the Greens' latest European obsession, which is Vienna. Sorry they had a head start being a high density living space since the fucking middle ages but no nah, people don't want to hear that they want to hear why vote for major parties when they're costing you thousands of dollars say guten tag to the vienna experience today vote differently anytime this is why crossbenchers with genuine intentions like jackie lambie david pocock even the teals credit where it's due they've been much more constructive than i originally thought they'd be see i can be wrong They've been doing the good things you think the Greens do. They're getting concessions and they're arguing in good faith. Because unlike the Greens, they don't actually have the incentive of arbitrarily taking over the Labor Party. These independents have been making speech after speech hurt, angry, genuinely baffled at how the Greens could possibly use the suffering of the most vulnerable members of society as a marketing gimmick. You can tell these independents can't even comprehend how someone can think like that. I can. It's because the Greens are not representatives. They're sales representatives. Literal door knockers. Maxie here's their top selling performer, so he gets a little housing badge. Most minor parties are. Literally going door to door, selling their elixirs to appeal to a specific type of narcissism. The yellow tonic promises to freeze your mortgage at 3%. Come on, look at this shit. You saw through the yellow tonic? Why is the green tonic any different? The orange one promises to rip those pesky trade deals in half. Jesus, what is it with gingers and hating trade? And the green tonic, that's a miracle cure apparently, doesn't just cure rent, it cures everything. And you feel so good when you drink it. The upper middle class swears by it. You know, when I first started this video, I was thinking, oh, I'll play along with the Greens' little shit light tag. You know how the Greens have to give themselves that little heroin hit of superiority by calling Labor shit light because they get it? it. I was going to say, well, if Labor's the shit light party, you're the bullshit party because everything you say is bullshit. <laughs> but then I started thinking about the intent behind the bullshit, which is to sell the brand identity to a bunch of Triple J listeners that much like the music that's played on the Jays, which sells out stadiums, but it's not selling out stadiums multiple nights in a row, and therefore it's not mainstream. And if it's not mainstream, then you get music. You don't have to actually go and get an education in music. You don't have to go and find underground music yourself. The Jays brand provides you with what you're really searching for, which is the feeling that if you're not mainstream, then you're different. And if you're different, you're special. You don't have to put in any effort at all into being special either. Just the fact you listen to the Jays is proof enough of that. No wonder it was so easy for Tom Ballard to make the switch from this to this. When I started thinking about the real world impacts those lies have purely to serve the insatiable egos of those c 
needs, their need to feel special and that they get it. That's what's keeping disabled people out of a home, kids on the street, battered women without refuge, refugees on Manus Island, even the thing that they pretend they founded their party on, which is protecting the planet. Perfectly happy to keep kids on the streets and chimneys pumping shit in the air because by doing that, they can psychopathically turn around and say, look, nothing's being done. It's because we're not in power. That's why nothing's being done. Oh, people are struggling more than they have in decades. We're gonna use that anxiety to block the system from delivering just so we can say that the system's broken because getting that the system's broken, that's what makes our audience feel special. When I think about the narcissism and sociopathy involved in building a political movement out of that morally abhorrent deceit, infuriatingly wrapped in a brand of moral superiority, Bullshit doesn't even begin to cover it. You're more of a pyramid scheme with a strange cult worship based around the religion of obstructionism. You're fucked.